General Flynn, uh, who had uh, resigned as the National Security Director. Now we find out that he has uh, registered as a foreign lobbyist for the Turkish government. In light of the fact that now there's information showing coming up that Turkey is actually supporting ISIS. Turkey is being accused of funding Islamic State in a blistering attack from Israel's defense minister, who claims Ankara is buying jihadi oil on the black market. As you know, Islamic State enjoyed Turkish money for oil for a very, very long period of time. I hope that it will be ended. Uh, this really becomes problematic for a guy who is supposed to be part of our national security apparatus. So we're going to see how that goes. The more important point is that the uh, issues that have surrounded General Flynn have led to these other discussions. And still, I feel we're only at the tip of the iceberg, but I'll bring it up. You have Hillary Clinton with the Clinton Foundation, when as Secretary of State, helped to broker a deal where a Canadian company, Uranium One. Key new details now in the growing scandal surrounding the Clinton campaign. We are now learning of a potential quid pro quo between Russia and the State Department, with Hillary Clinton at the center of it all. We now know that the State Department, under Hillary Clinton's control, signed off on a deal that would allow Russia to buy a uranium company. Behind all this, you had, as uh, Hillary's trusted associates, a John Podesta and his brother Tony Podesta. So besides being Democrat operatives, they also ran their own consulting organization. Through this consulting organization, it's been shown that there was a, a Russian bank that had uh, given them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now there's another allegation, I believe, involving over $30 million. We will investigate that part later, but this part, were these, uh, quote, consulting fees given to the Podestas as part of working with Hillary to uh, bring about uh, this transaction where 20% of America's uranium supplies were put under uh, Russian control through the sale of this Canadian company. Okay, the Democrats did it. This was an act of lobbying. This we know about. Okay, here you have not only General Flynn sort of dragged into this in some, in some respects uh, without, without basis, but then to look at the people who are making these allegations and find, sure enough, you know what, they've got a little dirty laundry of their own on this subject. Now, I bring this up, a lot of people have been bringing this up, but the question is, what else is there? You should know that there is what we'll call a legitimate industry of uh, what are called foreign lobbyists who, uh, who have business um, in this country. So here you had Flynn, acting as a lobbyist for Turkey, wanting to. But few people know that in Washington, there are over 500 registered foreign lobbyists. Hold on. For, that's right, Red China. Speaker of the House, former, is monetizing his decades of political relationships and cashing out to serve some of the most powerful special interests in the world. 500 lobbyists crawling around Washington, D.C., crawling around K Street in the halls of power, all shilling for communist China. Two of them, you're going to be disappointed to know, include one Robert Dole. That's right, the, the sweet old man from Kansas, a former senator, former presidential candidate, and he too is shilling for China. But also to balance things out, uh, Madeline, not so Albright, if you remember her, as the Secretary of State under Clinton. She too now is a registered foreign lobbyist for China. So there's something here to be dug up, and um, we hope to find out more in the next few weeks. So at the very least, we just point out what's good for the goose is good for the gander when it comes to these kinds of allegations, and uh, we're not going to tolerate this dishonesty.